In this video, I'll be looking at some more trigonometric identities. So in the first part, we looked at sine, cosine, and tan. And today I'm also going to be looking at these functions here. So cot, sec, and cosec, standing for cotangent, secant, and cosecant. These are functions you don't see in GCSEs. However, it's nothing too scary. Uh, for example, the cotangent is just the reciprocal of the tangent, so one over tan theta. Another way of stating that is if tan is sine over cosine, then the cotangent must be cosine over sine. So that's another way of defining the cotangent. Secant is one over the cosine or the reciprocal of the cosine function. And then the cosecant is one over sine theta. So there are three new functions you encounter in A-levels. And let's go ahead and talk about some identities that involve these functions. Um, so these are three identities already in effect defining what those functions are. Um, but you also need to know uh, things like one plus tan, the tan squared theta equals sec squared theta. And also one plus cot squared theta equals cosec squared theta. And these are both consequences of the fact that sine squared plus cosine squared equals one. So if you take this equation and you divide by sine squared theta, for example, um, so divide everything by sine squared theta, then this becomes one. This is cosine squared over sine squared. And remember the cotangent is cosine over sine. So this would be cot squared and then one over sine squared, that's the cosecant squared. Uh, so that's how you end up with these identities. Um, and then you can do the same thing, but divide by cosine squared and you'll end up with the first one. Um, so you need to be aware of those and be able to use them in different proofs. Um, so I wanna go ahead and look at some identities involving these functions. So I'll start with uh, this one here, so cot theta, cosec theta over, over sec squared theta plus cosec squared theta uh, is equivalent to cos cubed theta. Um, and this would be a show that question. So show that this is an identity. So when you're doing identities involving these functions, it helps to break it all down into sine and cosine and then simplify from there. So as I said in part one, start with the messier side. So left hand side here and see what you can do with this expression here. So as I just said, start by breaking it down into the cosine and sine. So cot is one over tan or cosine over sine. And you need to memorize these for A-levels. Anyways, let's continue. So this is multiplied by the cosecant, which is one over sine theta, uh, divided by the secant squared, which is one over cosine squared theta, plus cosecant squared, one over sine squared theta. Okay, so it's looking a bit messy at the moment. Let's look at the numerator and denominator kind of separately for a minute. Um, so if we look at the top line, we can simplify this to cosine theta over sine squared theta. And then the denominator, if we combined these fractions, we would have to multiply by each denominator. So this would become sine squared theta. Um, so I might just do that over here. This would become sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta all over cosine squared theta sine squared theta sine squared plus cosine squared that's one so this denominator here will be one over cos squared sine squared then when you've got two fractions divided by each other you can flip the denominator and multiply so this will become cosine theta over sine theta, sine squared theta, multiplied by cosine squared theta, sine squared theta. 
all over one. And then hopefully you can see you can cancel something here. So you can cancel that sine squared. And all you're left with now is cos times cos squared. And this will be cos cubed, which is the right hand side. Okay, so that was just an example to show that when you're working with these types of functions, it helps to break them down into cosine and sine most of the time and then simplify from there. Okay, next example, let's do tan theta plus cot theta multiplied by sine theta plus cosine theta is equivalent to sec theta plus cosec theta. And again, this is a show that this is an identity. Okay, so it's tempting here to, well, firstly, the left hand side is what I'm going to work with uh, because it's the messier side, as we say, and it's tempting to want to expand those brackets out. Oh, firstly, I should say, have a go at this if you want to first before I go through it. But as I said, it's tempting to want to expand those brackets out first. Um, but if you look at this left hand bracket, we've got a tan theta and a cotangent theta. Um, if we try to expand that out, it's going to have fractions and it's going to be really messy. So what I would start with is to simplify this bracket first. So let's change this tan and cotangent into the sine and cosine uh, functions and then see what we end up with. So this first bracket is what I'm going to focus on to start with. So tangent is sine over cosine and then cotangent is cosine over sine. Okay, next I'm going to stay with this one and combine those fractions. So multiply by sine and then cosine. So we're cross multiplying effectively to combine them. And in the numerator, we end up with sine squared plus cosine squared. And we've got cosine theta, sine theta in the denominator. And this is still multiplied by this second bracket here, sine cosine. Then you've instantly seen that we can change this numerator to one and we still have that denominator. And the second bracket is still here. Now we're multiplying these two things, right? So this is like a fraction over one. So if we multiply these together, one times this numerator over here, we'll just end up with sine theta plus cosine theta over cosine theta sine theta. And then if I split these apart again into two fractions, uh, I'll have sine theta over cosine sine plus cosine over cosine sine. And then if you do some canceling here, this sine will cancel with that sine on the bottom line and then cos and cos will cancel out. So what are we left with? We're left with one over cos and one over sine. And what do we need? We needed secant plus cosecant, um, which is these terms here. So we just need to write that as secant plus cosecant. Then this equals the right hand side and we're done. So uh, there are two examples of identities involving these functions here. Now, where is this heading? Well, you don't just need to be able to solve uh, identities with these. You need to be able to solve equations. You need to be able to differentiate and integrate and things like that. Um, so I might leave that for another video. I'm kind of trying to split this up a little bit, um, take it one step at a time and uh, get into the more complicated stuff once we've introduced these new concepts. So part one was these functions, part two, I looked at these functions here, purely at identities. Then we can look at equations involving these identities and different calculus problems. So I hope that was helpful. Please leave a like if it was. Subscribe if you wanna see more content and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.